Hi folks, Kathy Williams, DeVries here on um, Recorder and it's been a while since I've recorded one of my practice videos uh, but I thought I would start the practice of recording practice videos uh, simply from um, things I've heard from uh, other students, um, other teachers um, and I wanted to highlight that even uh, sort of pretty good players uh, have to come from somewhere. Uh, so that uh, sometimes actually it's not advisable to listen to the piece that you're trying to practice um, at full speed because you'll want to practice it at full. Either you'll want to practice at full speed um, and uh, you'll get it wrong. Um, or you'll simply give up and say, I won't ever play it at that speed. It is the uh, Darwin's missing link um, on the evolution of the species, um, if you, as you will. Uh, so, um, and recorder for me is an ideal, an ideal method uh, for me to convey um, those thoughts to you because recorder to me um, is uh, still not a natural instrument, it's getting more natural. Um, the alto has different fingerings um, to the descant and tenor. I don't quite have so much trouble with the bass, um, but um, the fingerings are kind of down a fifth, which actually are quite helpful because um, I think of them as uh, lower shallow motor clarinet fingerings. Anyway, so what I do um, when I'm confronted at it, and what I'm going to do is uh, Bach Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 4, which I'll be playing with the Brisbane Baroque players um, in a couple of months' time, is I'm going to take you through how I would practice it. Um, and the first thing I did was just play it through and identified which bars were most likely to give me problems. Um, and uh, sort of in the first bit, uh, the first line, bars 7 and 8, originally, initially when I, um, it was hard for me, I hadn't sort of gone up to um, a top G before, um, and then sort of around bars um, 51, 52, I hadn't gone from an F sharp to a G and back down again, and in fact you need to use a trick fingering for the F sharp anyway. Um, which. I'm finding a lot easier now but still way under tempo. Um, there was also bits around about 150 uh, to about uh, 190 um, which I highlighted then and then I would just simply practice over and over and over again and then sort of similar bits uh, repeat. Uh, I mean, one thing I had trouble with um, was the sharps, um, but I'll take you through that. So let's, um, and my, so one of the first things I do, of course, besides from putting on the air conditioning, because it's still very, very hot here uh, in Queensland, is I'll, I'll take it from the beginning, and when I get stuck, we're going to work on it. So I've got it about 138 for a crop, for a um, quaver. Sorry, and I'm playing the uh, the first flute part. And if you think it's sounding flat, it actually is flat because this re recorder is pitched at 415 rather than 440, which is uh, so 415 is uh, baroque pitch. Let's 
try that from the beginning in there. This was what I would do. Oh, I screwed up my spaghetti. Originally. So that G didn't come out. Let's try the bar before. And again. And again. And again. And again. Now from the beginning. Here I have to remember that the lower um, C sharp is that fingering. Mm. Let's do those couple of bars. It's been a few days since I've played recorder, so um, my uh, recorder brain is not quite working properly. And sometimes I'm not happy with the tuning of the C sharp, and I do put a um, half hole on there just to uh, work a little bit high sorry that's a d not a b Even sort of people of reasonable um, expertise do uh, do have trouble when they're, they're initially working through the piece. So, and I've got until June anyway. now we go on to um, the next block of notes from 35. Uh, I can actually play homage to my um, gymnastics coach who would force me and again and again and again and so that's been my um, practice sky practice technique and also um, my students as well it's like do it again 
Do it again. And I get um, I get asked this, and I say, well, why are you asking me to do it again? And uh, most likely is that uh, you're not listening to yourself, and uh, in fact, you're doing it wrong. So this is why I do recommend that you videotape yourself because you'll say, oh, I was doing it wrong. Um, it's been enormously beneficial to me. Um, and also, practice isn't about practicing until you get it right. Practice is about practicing until you can't um, get it wrong. So um, that's why you see me, I'll, I'll pick out, and I mean, even if it's just the most minor little um, imperfection. So um, let's keep going with this particular bank of notes. I haven't quite got that top F sharp yet. I got it now. So I'll just practice again. to the next page you've got sort of um which we've done um before and then um and that's a bit funny as well So I might actually just take that series of bars, especially this. So let's just take that out a bit. My um, recorder brain is still not happening. So also um, what is um, sort of driving the um, insecurity is the fact that I'm playing it directly for you guys. I'm not editing um, any of this because I do want to show you what it is like um, practicing and also how to nut out, how to get something right and the fact that even, you know, good players uh, go through this kind of stuff. Um, they just don't let on that they do. nutting me out a little bit is the um, D sharp um, which is an A sharp fingering if you were on the descant um, but I tend to like to think in terms of flats rather than sharp so um, so and of course the um, G sharp is just a D sharp fingering And then you've got some loops because it's quite easy just sort of running up and down 
scales, but when you've got um, chords and octave leaps and stuff, it does get um, quite difficult. Um, and I'll show you why. Um, this is a, a piece I'm doing um, in May. And uh, finding this quite difficult because you have um, chords, like triads, up high. So sort of the... And then... But then the piece goes... And then you've got this but I mean I have practiced and practiced and practiced this and then this bit this octave bit um, is an absolute beast so you're going And I know I'm probably making it look dreadfully, dreadfully easy. I assure you that is not the case. Okay, so let's go back. That was a Vivaldi. Let's go back to Bach. Um, so we're, we're into the um, second page. So this is, this is bar 133. Let's get the um, metronome on it. I had the metronome going most times, so I know. And this is the difficult bit, actually. Which I'm making look quite easy, but um, you've got C sharps and A sharps and uh, all different G sharps all happening all over the place. So that you've got to reckon, you've got to. So work out the, the uh, B to the C sharp. And then C sharp to A sharp. And in fact the triad. So... Adding a G sharp to the mix. So that when you come down the full phrase, So I'm still not quite um, happy with it. So I've got to remember to, to hop on. I'm going to call it 
um, an E flat, just for, even though it's a G sharp written. the next bit. So. Which if you know your um you know your triplets uh, your triads you're quite okay with. Um next bit's not too hard at 221. Well it wasn't. Let's try that again. come into some familiar territory at 267. completely there. Let's try that again. to the um, last page. <sighs> and it can be um, frustrating like this.
and then the last bit. Sometimes I sort of go into um, descant fingerings. And then what we do is we then start it again. Um, so I'll wrap it up to 146 to see how it goes. Um, I'm going to tackle the hard bits. there. So that's um, an example of uh, um, how to practice. Uh, so if you do have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, so good luck and bye for now.